Today we want to begin by reviewing the definition of the small strain tensor and, and I'd like to start um, sort of with a uh, connecting it with maybe what you already know about strain. So I want to first ask the question, what is strain? So when we think about what strain is, uh, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll come up with something like delta L over L or something like that and that's okay. Um, but more formally, strain is basically a measure of how much some point in the material has deformed. Okay, so okay, so it's it's a measure. I will say that it's not the only measure. Um, we could talk about the deformation gradient tensors, the displacement gradient tensors, um, the stress the stretch tensors. There's a variety of other measures, but we frequently use strain as a measure to talk about deformation. And it's also a measure of how much a point in the material has deformed. So it's it can vary from point to point within the material. And it's it's a it's a measure of how much the material has deformed from some initial state. Okay? I'll underline deformed here for you, uh, just so that you remember that's what strain is measuring. Um, so that means that uh, the, the fact that it's at a point tells us that strain uh, is a field quantity. Uh, and we'll say it's strain epsilon, and I'll put a little tilde under it to indicate a, a tensor. Um, but it's a field quantity, um, and it's, I guess if you want, it's formally a tensor field. So that we would say something like the strain is, as a tensor, is actually dependent on the position that we'll define by x. That's what it means to be a field quantity. It means it varies uh, in space. Okay, so let's call that equation 1. So when you first learned about strain, um, you likely focused on normal engineering strain. So what that probably looked like is you had some bar, uh, let's draw a bar here, and that bar had some initial length L0, and then under some uh, axial load it stretched and has some new length now, we'll call it L, Okay, and you probably define that strain as epsilon. You didn't write it as a tensor because you're only really in one dimension. Uh, you said that was L minus L naught divided by L naught, right? It's the change in length divided by the length or the oft quoted delta L over L. Okay, I'll call that equation two. Nothing wrong with this definition. This is the normal engineering strain. But a couple things. It's technically an average over the bar, okay? And and um, the reason that you don't usually even talk about it being an average is because you assumed that the, that the strain was uniform in the bar, okay? Nothing wrong with any of that definition. Um, that works for a lot of cases. Uh, as you probably know by this stage in your career, um, strain doesn't have to be uniform. Um, it can be non-uniform so that it becomes somewhat difficult to to um, figure out what the if the average strain is actually a meaningful quantity and many times it's not. Um, but what we want to do is now add a little sophistication to that definition. Okay, so here we're going to add some sophistication. So what we want to do, we're going to, to, to think about a beginning by beginning to add some sophistication. Let's consider two points and we'll call those two points H and Q. Okay, and I'm, I'm putting those in capital on purpose, so please use those in your notes, capital H, capital Q, um, and they're going to be separated by some differential vector uh, called dx. Okay, and we're going to call the magnitude of dx uh, ds. Okay? Uh, don't panic. We're not gonna we're not gonna go through a, a hard definite a hard derivation for strain. I'm just setting up the picture that we would use to develop that definition. I'm gonna just give you the definition here in a second. But let's think about um, the most basic way we might wonder about deformation. Okay. So let's say let's just draw some set of axes here. We don't need to label them necessarily for this discussion. Here's some body, some material. Okay. And let's call this point here, uh, that is going to be uh, point H, and it's located at position X, okay? And then there's a point, let's call it up here, 
uh, it could be Q, okay? And those two are separated by some distance dx, okay? That's all. So now what happens? We deform that in some fashion. So let's say, there we go, there's under deformation. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw the vectors now. Um, so let's 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 begin. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow it up a little bit um, so that we can see it better. There's Q. Uh, it doesn't have to be vertical here, guys. It could be something else, but I drew it vertically over there, so we'll leave it at that. Okay. There's Q and H. Okay. So this is going to be d s equals the magnitude of d x. Right. That vector actually is d x though. Okay, and then under deformation, that H, let's say maybe it moved to this position here, and we'll denote the new position as little h, and the the this vector as H moves from big H to little h, we'll call that the displacement u x. Okay, so it's it's the displacement at x. Okay, this also is a field. It's a displacement field. Okay, and maybe uh, maybe Q goes up to here, something like this. So then this is the displacement of Q, and if we were to project this displacement of X here, it probably would look something like this. I'm kind of making it with a dashed line. Okay, that that's let's say is U of X from below. And then there's this additional deformation here that we'll call du, okay? That vector du. And then this, hard to see here, this um, vector that now look, that, that uh, dx became, now looks, has some length, we'll call it d little s, and that'll be some magnitude of d little x as well okay that's that's sort of how we would set up the problem okay I'm not going to go through um, like I say a rigorous de uh, de derivation of this I'll just say that for the case of infinitesimal elasticity we use what's called the small strain tensor um, that we're going to define but not derive as follows we'll say it, this is in tensor notation Epsilon ij, acknowledging that strain is a tensor, uh, will be equal to one half times the partial of ui with respect to j plus the partial of uj with respect to i. Okay? And we'll call that equation three. So that's, that's what I want you to know about the small strain tensor. I'll give you, give you a couple remarks here. Number one, the small strain tensor assumes infinitesimal displacements, okay, and uh, infinitesimal displacement gradients, okay? Number two, um, the small strain tensor is, by definition, symmetric. Uh, it's actually the symmetric part of the displacement gradient tensor. Um, and then number three, uh, I want to just show you that it's easy to see that equation three uh, agrees with our intuition, at least regarding the normal strain very well. Okay, and so the way we can see that is, let's go ahead and just consider epsilon one one, okay? So we can write from equation three, we can write that epsilon one one is equal to one half times the partial of u one with respect to x one plus the partial of u one with respect to x one, okay? And that of course just looks like the partial total of u one with respect to x one, okay? Uh, we can call that equation four. And then let's think about it. For the 1D problem, like we talked about at the beginning, okay, we would end up with epsilon 1, 1 equals now, instead of this partial, because it's just in 1D, we'd have du1 dx1 
or we could just, since it's only 1D, we don't need to subscript it anymore. That's just du dx, okay? So what does that look like? Well, let's just assume that, let's, let's draw our bar again, okay? Uh, in this case, we're gonna give it a length that's initially dx, and then under load, it's gonna stretch Okay, and that distance that it stretched, I'm exaggerating, obviously this is not infinitesimal if we were to actually stretch this far, but that additional stretch is du. Okay, and so what we would say is that if epsilon 1, 1 is equal to delta L over L, L naught, delta L is just the du term and L naught is just the dx term. Okay, so the, the idea that strain would be a, derivative of the displacement shouldn't uh, make us uncomfortable or surprise us. It's actually right in line with what you learned at the very beginning uh, when you talked about strain.